In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Risen Christ, you are hope arisen. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Victor, King ever reigning. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God, everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of your people, you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Each day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, 
kept in heaven for you, who, by the power of God, are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now, for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. that may worthily proclaim his gospel worthily and well in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw that it was the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. We have an opportunity to appreciate the power of Christ's love for us. In so many ways and through so many apparitions and revelations throughout the century, Christ has made it pretty important that we understand his merciful presence among us. That we as struggle as sinners in our journey of life, 
we are always forgiven. That he brings us forward to a new step, a new stage in our life as he expounds that mercy and that mystery of mercy, which is love. Today is a really special day because two exceptional leaders in the church are going to be canonized or have already been canonized. They are John the 23rd and John Paul II. John the 23rd was a visionary of very, very simple and very uh, basic faith. And what he opened was the heart of the church to the spirit, a spirit that goes into the 21st century. As we look at Vatican II and all its documents, and we take time to read them and reflect, we recognize that it even touches into our century. Forward-looking, with a vision of Christ, the risen Lord, so powerful and so present. John Paul II was an interpreter of that vision of Vatican II and made it possible for us to stand, understand it more deeply. Today we celebrate the day of faith in which they have been canonized and called saints in our church. Today too, it reminds us of the community of faith that both of them struggled and were very apt in presenting and proclaiming to the church a community of the risen Christ presence among us. Today, the apostles remind us in the Acts that it is a matter of prayer, a dialogue with the life of the risen Christ and living in the hope of his resurrection that is significant. And that it is communion, the breaking of the bread in which we understand the mystery and remember the mystery of his death and resurrection and so are in communion with all that he is about so that we may be in communion with the world around us. Today, the expectation is that we bring this community of faith to the world. And we do that through our prayer and through our outreach. An outreach to those most needy, to the jobless, to the homeless, to those who were alienated and abandoned, both physically and mentally. To our seniors who sometimes struggle being alone. And to the many who need our help. A community of faith cannot sit and just glory in the presence of the Lord. It must bring that risen Lord's glory and peace to others. And so our salvation is, as we're reminded today in the scriptures and by these two men, is to do the work of the Lord, to bring it into the world so that we may be praise and glory to the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Let us pray that we might be open to the presence of the risen Lord within and among us. That all members of the church may increase their self-giving to others thus making visible the presence of the risen Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That peoples of all nations may come to salvation through encounters with the generous self-giving of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the poor and anyone in need may receive generously of the goods of this earth through the self-giving of the community of believers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we ourselves may always be firm in our belief, generous in our care of others, and open to the movement of the Spirit within us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of life, you give us the gift of the Holy Spirit for our salvation. Hear these our prayers, that we may be strengthened in our belief in your risen Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renew by confession of your name and by baptism they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all to Lord, yet more or gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sings together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks to you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by, by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of Jesus, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter my room. Let me say the word.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that a reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his own begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.